Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my video about how SJWs teach men and women to have the worst traits of each other while also uh, not having any of the good traits. Uh, but uh, first of all, before I start, I was talking to Ethan, and I was like, man, I only got two uh, campaigns open. It feels really low T. <laughs> so um, the good news is um, I had a talk with the uh, pre press guy who's done all the recent books and done a great job. And I said, hey, I need you to take lead on Expendables. I'm just straight up and down. I'm just choking under the pressure. This stuff is lettered. The art is done. But having uh, five different soft covers and one hard cover, and it's, it's just making me... And the thing is, I've read the story. Like, it's essentially perfect it's like the best thing i've ever produced so i got nervous at the final stage so i i i, I shared where is it right here i got it here, right here all the dropbox all the different and i was like okay so it's you and me it's like i basically said you know you're i'm paying you to act like you're my boss just tell me like what you need here's access to all the dropbox if you got a question ask me the question Let's go. Let's get this out by uh, Christmas. So that's what we're shooting for. And then um, uh, I'm finishing up the script on uh, the dialogue. I didn't hire Christos Gage uh, for Jawbreaker's Grand Bazaar. And I need to reemphasize how good this is. It's really, really good. So um, yesterday I saw this tweet. And then I went down the rabbit hole <laughs> of all the Gina Carano stuff. And it's actually a lot worse than I thought it was. Um, not worse for Gina. It's in fact uh, she's even more of uh, a uh, a victim. Although I'm sure she wouldn't call herself a victim. Um, but uh, it's a uh, so um, I haven't seen season two yet. I never noticed that she has a little rebellion tattoo under her eye. Uh, but um, so uh, SJWs have been harassing women. <laughs> I'm laughing because, like, their whole thing is defend women, respect women, strong women, uh, believe all women. But if you step out of line in one way once, they will work to destroy your entire life. Uh, so the article on IGN says, The Mandalorian seems to be setting up a New Republic spinoff series, and Cara Dune could be at its center. Sounds like a nothing burger, clickbait article, no harm, no foul, move, oh no, no, no. <laughs> Petty, vindictive Chuck Windig uh, comes out with, uh, she's lucky she wasn't mean and vulgar to conservatives online, or boy howdy. Please look at the screen, I'm not, I'm not vamping, I'm not improvising, I'm reading the words of a middle-aged man that he typed. Or boy howdy, she'd be out of a job. Am I right? Sideways glance. Um, so uh, just to, you know, elephant in the room. This doesn't sound like something that any man would ever think or say. It sounds like an immature middle school and i'm talking about immature as compared to their peers an immature middle school girl um so you might say hey what's the deal with gina carano i, I mean i've kind of heard some stuff did she offend someone no no <laughs> i assume the same thing i assumed maybe she made a comment a tweet 10 years ago that was looked up or she said something that was meant as a joke and Oh no, they were just, just straight up harassing the shit out of her. Uh, so um, this one explains it uh, all very well. Star Wars Mandalorian star Gina Carano accused of, quote, mocking trans people, unquote, with boop, bop, beep pronouns joke. Uh, so um, she's uh, faced criticism for transphobia. I'm going to, it's it's a long article. I'm going to encapsulate it. Uh, she had faced calls to add her pronouns to her Twitter biography, a common practice among transgender and cisgender social media users to help avoid misgendering. 
I, I don't I, I don't think they meant to say cisgender. I think they meant to say agender. Um, however, in response to the, to the demand, the actor added the words boop, bop, beep to her Twitter name in apparent ridicule of the convention. Defending her actions in a subsequent tweet, Carano wrote, They're mad because I won't put pro pronouns in my bio to show my support for trans lives. After months of harassing me in every way, I decided to put three very controversial words in my bio. Beep, bop, boop. I'm not against trans lives at all. They need to find less abusive representation. <laughs> I'm laughing because SJWs are not used to being spoken to like this. Uh, they are in shock, and their only response is to try harder uh, to destroy uh, Gina. Um, so they just talk about, you know, uh, her uh, career, and she says, uh, Pedro and I spoke, and he helped me understand why people were putting pronouns in their bios. I didn't know before, but I do now. I won't be putting them in my bio, but good for all of you who choose to. Choose. Emphasis on that word. Petty, vindictive bullies, harassers of women like Chuck Wendig, decided that Gina had to put pronouns in her bio. Um, and she did not have choice in the, the matter. She was going to do it or they were going to harass her. This is social extortion. Uh, she also defended the joke, saying, Beep Bop Boop has zero to do with mocking trans people and everything to do with exposing the bullying mentality of the mob that has taken over the voices of many genuine causes. Okay, so... I did not expect her to be that eloquent. <laughs> I've been a fan of hers since uh, Haywire uh, in 2011. She always comes off as very kind. Um, yeah, she's an MMA, big, you know, tough uh, woman, but she always feels like she wants to, like, uh, bake you some ziti or something like that. <laughs> like, she's very kind of maternal and feminine and just nice. Just nice. Um, that, of course, is going to be a problem to SJWs. Um, however, many Star Wars fans still took offense at Gina's actions, with some even calling for her removal from the series. I can't... <laughs> All the ads and everything really screwed up this thing, so I can't really tell who's saying what. I think this is a, like a Twitter person saying it. I don't think people have to put pronouns if they do not want to, but do not mock people who do. You might not think it has a mocking don't, tone, but it clearly does. That's subjective. Okay, so these are Twitter people. Can you see how some would read that as mocking? I don't think trans people would like all of you trying to force a woman to put something in her bio. Oh, so then Gina says, I don't think trans people would like all of you trying to force a woman to put something in her bio through harassment and name calling every day for months. So she emphasizes every day for months. So I've, I've been stalked by severely mentally ill people and harassed by less mentally ill people. And people will say this thing. They'll say, you were in the Marines. You were in war. Can't you handle it? There's just something about the human brain where this stuff accumulates. It doesn't bother you. It doesn't bother you. It doesn't bother you. And all of a sudden it bothers you. And you really can't get back to that previous state. You know, uh, people are social animals. Uh, and, you know, when you get this kind of invective, eventually it's going to permeate the membrane. Um, so, you know, Gina's MMA. I, I don't know anything about MMA. <laughs> I'm assuming she was a champion of some division for at least one day, some, she was okay. I, I looked at her record one time. It looked like she was solid. Um, I always hate when everyone's like, they'll see like, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> what was What's the woman with the heavy jaw from uh, Pirates of the Caribbean? They'll see her do some fight training and they'll be like, oh boy, she could beat me up. It's like, no, come on. <laughs> That's glorified dancing. Um, but yes, yes, Gina Carano actually could choke me the fuck out and like with me trying not to um and no i'm not into that that, that would be humiliating um but uh what i'm saying is is you know like well you're tough you're an mma person why does this get to you well because inside of her tough you know muscular skeletal skull she has a human brain that 
has certain limits, you know, to how much harassment uh, you can take. Um, and, uh, okay, so that, <laughs> they don't really build to a thesis that article just kind of ends. So you might say, what's the deal with Chuck Wendig? Well, sorry, that, I don't, don't have enough time <laughs> for all of it, but I found this uh, article uh, and this uh, does, uh, explains it quite well. So um, uh, this guy says, I generally, and again, don't contact anyone for any reason that I mentioned. Uh, he says, I generally don't take enjoyment out of the misfortune of others, but when it is self-inflicted, I take a certain amount of joy out of it. And in the case of Chuck Windig, it put a big old smile on my face. For those of you out of the loop, Marvel originally hired Chuck Windig to produce a comic book miniseries called Star Wars Shadow of Vader. It was announced on October 5th, 2018 at the New York Comic Con, just a day after the announcement. Due to a lack of soy intake, I am guessing he went on a political Twitter rant, which included these charming tweets aimed at anyone who does not agree with his politics. Now I'm going to check that I'm actually recording, and I am. So, uh, and again, please look at the screen. He does not have this, but... Okay, the, the open mouth soy smile, um, the male feminist. I, ha I have this joke I said, you know, when uh, these male feminists inevitably get sued for the harassment that they're known for. I'm not talking about Chuck, I'm talking about stuff like Joss Whedon. Uh, their defense can be, well, you know, your honor, we warned these women that we were harassers. It's like, well, how did you do that? It's like, well, I, I had an open mouth smile in my bio and I said I was a male feminist. I mean, <laughs> it's pretty much, <laughs> and you could see a jury going, yeah, I mean, she was warned. Um, so, uh, so this is the type of stuff he would write. And again, just to emphasize at the time, his Twitter bio said, Star Wars. And I know people like Dan Slott, they love to do this bit. They love, they, they're like, look, I'm not an employee. I'm a contractor, I'm a freelancer. This is my personal Twitter. I'm expressing my personal beliefs. Yeah, but 99% of people who go to Dan Slott's Twitter profile go because he writes Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, Iron Man. And he puts it in his bio. You go because of the properties you work on. And then you abuse that privilege to foist your politics on people and abuse and harass paying customers. If you want to express your personal opinions, go have Dan S10036. That's my old zip code in Manhattan. I don't know what his is. Um, and then you will have your, you know, 400 followers, you know, and uh, then you express your stuff. So they, they play this game where they attract people using properties that they didn't create. Then they use it to push their politics and harass and belittle and demean paying customers. And then, then they, they do this. This is just my personal. Oh my gosh. So um, this is Chuck Wendig. Winter is coming, you callous fucknecks. You prolapsed assholes. You grotesque monsters. You racists and rapists and wretched abusers. You vengeful petty horrors. They can eat shit, all of them. They can eat a boot covered in shit. <laughs> and the, we need the SpongeBob uh, uh, three hours later. Today I got the call. I'm fired because of the negativity and vulgarity that my tweets bring. Seriously, that's what Mark, the editor, said. It was too much politics, too much vulgarity, too much negativity on my part. It sounds, yeah, so, and then the uh, commentator goes on, attacking your customers and threatening to feed them your shit-covered boot is not the best way to portray your customers. I'm not sure how to use the word portray. Um, you are the face of a business you work for, said business whether you like it or not. It must be shocking to folks like Chuck to find themselves held to their own standards for their awful behavior. I don't know why people think they would be able to avoid the consequences for going on insane rants like this. It's unprofessional and divisive. That's, out, that's out for all you out there in the UK. I pronounced it divisive. 
divisive from a business standpoint. And we exclusively see this in comic and video game industries. And then he does like a quote, you know, not a like a character quote. Get these bigots off the internet and make them unemployable. Freedom of speech does not mean freedom from consequences. Yeah. A few short moments later, how dare there be consequences for threatening violence against people's opinions we dislike. Uh, then they talked about some of these uh, other people. Again, don't contact uh, any of them. So Marvel has fired Chuck Wendig because he didn't give in to endless harassment from comics gate garbage humans. That, he actually wrote garbage humans. Who aren't even real fans anyway. He wasn't polite to them because those people do not deserve politeness. Marvel fired him because he didn't back down. Cowards! Again, please don't contact me. <laughs> sorry. I gotta move that off the screen. That is, I'm just, I'm sorry. This is another one. If the creative climate at Marvel is horrendously unsafe and spineless for straight, white, able cis men like Chuck Wendig, then that means their willingness to defend any creator who isn't those things is even lower than we thought. I'm sorry, they're so histrionic. <laughs> I saw the final... Okay, this is the final sentence. And we already thought it was non-existent. <laughs> Meanwhile, the guy with the meanest harassment-flooded Twitter feed in comics is writing Spider-Man. And also was writing Spider-Man. What? Huh? Okay, so he's talking about Dan Slott. Like... Actual belligerent people get away with this so often that you're not sure which Spider-Man writer I mean. That's a problem. I, oh, so I think he's talking about Nick Spencer. Uh, this is from a couple years ago. <laughs> Here's the Mary Sue article from the time. Marvel fires Star Wars author Chuck Wendig for not being civil and we're furious. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, okay, so the end of this article, he says, uh, The Mary Sue has played a pretty cancerous role in the comics industry. They have consistently called for the firing of creators for drawing too much cleavage, saying anything problematic. That makes them fucking hypocrites. Leaving out the tweets and the real reason why he was fired, in a way, is an admission of defeat. If they showed them, they would have had to defend his comments, comments which would have been impossible Okay, this person has a lot of typos. They mean without, but it says with. Without getting egg on their faces. He, he is currently throwing himself a pity party on Twitter, blaming homophobia and the toxic fandom for getting him fired. No, your frequent Twitter meltdowns and tirades while acting as a representative of Marvel and Lucasfilm got you fired. Maybe there is a lesson to be learned here. Okay, it's, I'm sorry. The syntax and like the rhythm of... Maybe it's being translated from another language. Maybe there is a lesson to be learned here is don't be a dick to customers. So, um, about Larch. I am a cucumber in a fruit bowl. I don't think that's true. Um, I don't believe that for a second. Uh, so anyway, to get back to the original one. As we saw with more context, Chuck makes a comparison to Gina when it is no comparison at all. He decided to use a platform, Marvel, Disney, Star Wars, to launch politically divisive invective at paying customers. Gina Carano was just trying to live her best life as a strong woman. And these petty vindictive bullies decided that she had to put the pronouns in her bio. Okay, so here's a little, here's a little M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah, uh, the whole pronouns thing is bullshit. It's grown adults playing neighborhood of make-believe and pretending one person, like how stupid, somebody pointed it out. They're like, we see how you try to be respectful, but then in the middle, you slip. Yeah, because I'll be talking about someone who is clearly a woman, but I'm supposed to call them they and them, even though they're one person. So I'll start off saying they and them, and then when I forget this ridiculous minefield I'm in, 
I just do the natural thing. And when I'm talking about a woman, I call it that person a woman, her, or she. And then at the end, I remember we're all playing this stupid ass game. And then I say they and them. Gina Carano is a woman. <laughs> Everyone who sees her knows she's a woman. She doesn't need to put her pronouns because she's not pretending to not be a woman. Not even getting into the thing that respect all women, believe all women, don't harass women, and these petty, vindictive, what does he call them? Vengeful, petty horrors. These vengeful, petty horrors, government name SJWs, have spent months harassing this woman daily for not giving in to their mentally ill demands. She's lucky she wasn't mean and vulgar to conservatives online. Or boy howdy, she'd be out of a job. Am I right? Sideways glance. That's not what happened. Again, I will point out this thing that happened to me because it's very, very indicative of all of this. When I lived in Hell's Kitchen, you know, had a small apartment, I didn't have a laundry, so I had to go to the laundromat. You put that stuff in the, the washer, you got about 50 minutes. Here's something I learned in the Marines where everyone's a thief, me too, <laughs> there, there's a saying, there's only one thief in the Marine Corps, everyone else is just trying to get their stuff back. It's actually kind of true because a lot of times when you're stealing something, it's because someone else stole it from you and you need it. So nobody ever steals wet clothes. They steal dry or drying clothes. So you put the stuff in the washer, you got 50 minutes and also it locks. Uh, so it was one block away and I go to this pizza place and it was really good. Uh, it was a, I think it was, a, a, what is the brick oven pizza? There was bricks on the building. There was, there was bricks somewhere in the mix. So anyway, good, very good pizza, very good prices and done very quickly. You know, they got it there. They just heat it up. And there was this old woman there who worked there that at first I assumed was like, started or, or owned it or, or sold it to her son. After like a little while there, I would overhear her conversations and she was just an employee. That was it. No relation to the owners at all. And she was a vengeful, petty whore. She would yell at people for anything, any transgression. And I mean, really, really like demeaning you and just like screaming at the top of her lungs. And I never got yelled at ever. But I also stopped going because I didn't enjoy the pizza. I didn't enjoy the experience. All I was doing was just waiting to be yelled at. And in the words of Billy Crystal, it wasn't funny and it wasn't fun. I stopped going. And then I went to the other pizza place that wasn't as good. Um, it was kind of low key, like, a, like they would never tell homeless people to leave. Even really, really crazy shit smelling homeless people. They would just let them chill in there with a cup of water forever. Um, so I'd always peek in there. It's like, okay, yeah, coast is quick. Um, but, uh, I just want to emphasize how much SJWs despise women, hate them. And they are only supportive of women when they agree with them 100% of the time. If you step out of line, Gina Carano has been on their radar screen because she is suspected of being a conservative. There's no real solid evidence. I would say more that she is probably friends with conservatives. She might be, but I'm guessing on 95 to 99% of subjects, her and Chuck Wendig are in total agreement. The problem in Chuck Wendig's mind is that they differ by one to 5%. And that's not allowed because you are not allowed to have any differing opinions from SJWs. There is one single way to think about every single subject. And if you stray, you have targeted yourself. They didn't do it. You did it to yourself to be harassed and destroyed. Chuck Wendig is not a defender of women. He is an attacker of women. He is a harasser of women. He joins in very heartily on digital lynch mobs to harass this woman for not doing what she was ordered to do, for not following orders from mentally ill people. Uh, and that's absolutely disgusting. So anyway, thanks for watching. 
subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone given to the Patreon and the Indiegogo. You're funding original content and an original lawsuit. Links are in the description. If you ordered Iron Sights, Two Psychos, Second Printing, that went out middle of last week. People should be getting it very soon. Um, I sent off the backers list for Zach Friday sale. Should be getting the invoice for that today, paying that, and that should go out hopefully tomorrow. That would be fantastic if it would. Uh, Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar, I'm uh, finishing up the uh, dialogue. Spendables to go to hell. I basically paid someone to be my own boss. Uh, and this guy works very quickly. So I'm thinking this is we're going to have a quick turnaround on assembling this print file. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.